What is going on everyone? Luca Rosano here back with another video and rocking the new hairdo. Yes, I cut my hair. Decided to cut my hair for my sister's wedding to go with a shorter look. So short hair Luca is back guys. Hope you're all doing well and hope you're all having a great Wednesday so far. In today's video, we're going to take a look at ESPN's predictions as they recently predicted where they think each team is going to finish in the Eastern Conference, and uh, we're going to dive into it, and I'm going to tell you my thoughts and opinions on this rankings list. Before we get into it, guys, do me a solid, drop a like on the video. Please subscribe to the channel if you are new. A lot of y'all are watching my videos, but you are not subscribed. Please go ahead and make sure you have clicked that big red subscribe button. It does help a ton, and make sure you turn on post notifications. I know I haven't been coming out with a ton of content, been busy with a lot of stuff, but... Sure enough, we are going to be back better than ever. We are going to be busier than ever as the NBA season is coming and it's nearing its return. The preseason is going to be starting very soon at the start of October. So you can definitely expect a lot more content from me. Go and follow me on social media if you haven't already. Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And finally, guys, go hit that join button if you want to become a channel member today and help this channel on a monthly basis. Okay, so ESPN basically categorized all the teams in the East in a couple of groups. So their first group, they listed it as the contenders. They got the Brooklyn Nets finishing first. No surprises there. Brooklyn, they're going to be healthy. They're going to be ready to go. And then they got Milwaukee number two. Milwaukee Bucks defending NBA champions, bringing back a lot of the, the familiar faces. That team is going to be the same. So expect the Bucks to once again be a, a top tier team in the East. Philadelphia, they got number three. We don't know where Ben Simmons is going to end up. I thought he was going to be traded already. They have not traded him yet. I think they are going to trade him soon, however, before the trade deadline. But nonetheless, they got Philly third. They got Miami fourth. Of course, Miami expected to take a big leap, getting Kyle Lowry, that team picking up a lot of other pieces. They are looking good, and they are ready to go. They are obviously in win-now mode, and that championship window is open. Atlanta fifth. We saw what they did last season. I don't expect them to fall off. And then they got the Celtics sixth. Kind of interesting there, as Boston was uh, an eighth-place team just a year ago. But I guess they're betting on Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown to take that next step. So those are the contenders in ESPN's eyes. And by the way, this was... ESPN's expert panel who predicted this. Just want to make that clear. The next group they got, they categorized it as the play-in group. The Knicks, seventh. New York getting Kemba Walker, bringing back a lot of the same players from a year ago. Then they got the Hornets and Bulls tied for eighth with the same record. Hornets, Lamelo Ball and company looking to take that next step. And then the Bulls, we know what they did. The Rosen, they got Vucevic at the trade deadline a year ago. Lonzo Ball, Alex Caruso, the Bulls are expected to make a big leap this season, but obviously ESPN doesn't think so as they have the Bulls finishing 40 and 42 and tied with the Hornets for eighth. And then they got the Pacers in that play in group mix at 10th. And then they got their bottom five the Wizards, 11th, and the Raptors, 12th. ESPN has the Raptors finishing 12th. Before I get into why they're wrong, let's just continue the rest of the list. They got Cleveland, Detroit, and the Magic at the bottom. So they got the Wizards and Raptors flirting with that play-in group, but not quite there. And then they got the Cavaliers, Pistons, and Magic as the three worst teams in the East, which I agree with. I think it will be Cleveland, Detroit, and Orlando as the three worst teams in the East. And this is what they had to say about the Wizards and the Raptors. And I quote, The Wizards and Raptors aren't too far off from being in the previous group and still have the firepower to be able to challenge for a spot in the play-in tournament, according to our panel's predictions. Meanwhile, Toronto's climb back to a potential playoff berth could just be centered around familiarity. Even after trading Kyle Lowry to Miami, the Raptors will finally return to their home city after spending last season in Tampa, Florida because of Canada's you know what restrictions can't say the C word. You know what I'm talking about. If I do say the C word, YouTube demonetizes me. So I just want to let you guys know why I don't say the C word, which is what we're dealing with right now. A pretty bad pandemic. So the Raptors in 12th ESPN has the Raptors finishing 12th. I mean, 
I know a lot of you are on their keyboards right now saying, ESPN doesn't know anything. The Raptors are being written off again. This is typical. The Raptors are going to prove them. I'm going to tell you personally why ESPN is wrong and get into a couple of reasons. But before I do, I just quickly want to say that today's video is sponsored by Manscaped, guys. As you know, Manscaped is a proud sponsor of the Luca Rosano YouTube channel. And uh, I know from some of you who have reached out to me that you do enjoy their products. So if you haven't already gotten a product or products for Manscaped, you can do so. All you got to do is head on over to manscaped.com. Use my promo code LUCA3. You get 20% off plus free shipping. It's a win-win situation. I'm helping you, gentlemen, and you're helping me. You take a look at Manscaped. It's time to bundle up with the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0. Inside this package, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker, Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold your goodies. Make your balls a priority this fall, gentlemen, and choose Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. So again, if you want to pick up any product or products from Manscaped, I got you. Use my promo code LUCA3 over at Manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping. You can thank me later. The first reason I want to get into here, the Raptors are going to be back in front of their home crowd. This team didn't even play in front of a home crowd. They were home in Tampa and getting booed for crying out loud. Just because of the fact that the Raptors are going to be back where they belong, cheered by people who actually love them, is going to boost this team's morale, is going to create such a buzz and boost their energy as a whole. That in itself is a good enough reason to believe that the Raptors are going to be much better this season. And I view the return home crowd as a secret weapon for the Toronto Raptors. So that's an obvious reason why. But I do want to make it clear. The Raptors are back at home. So that is going to bode well for them. Another reason why the Raptors are going to do significantly better this season. They're healthy. People tend to forget. I sometimes tend to forget. This Raptors team was in fourth place before the C word wiped them out. If they didn't go through that stretch, I believe the Raptors would have made the playoffs. They were clicking. They were getting hot at the right time. Then the C word wiped them out. And there went the Raptors season. Because they were never truly able to recover from that. Another thing I want to point out here. A lot of people saying the Raptors are going to look lost without Kyle Lowry. Let me remind y'all, the Raptors actually looked better without Kyle Lowry during last season. I mean, how many times have the Raptors put together their best overall team performances without Kyle Lowry? I love Kyle Lowry. But this Raptors team is going to be okay without him. So quit saying this team is not going to be as good without Kyle Lowry. Also, the Raptors are going to have competent centers to begin the season. This team rolled out Alex Len and there I say Aaron Baines starting last season. And we saw how problematic that was. I'll tell you this much. Ken Birch is going to be an absolute beast for the Raptors. And the guy backing him up, Precious. Oh my goodness, am I eager and excited to watch this guy go to work. I think he's going to be something special for this Raptors team. Yes, their offense is going to be a work in progress. And we do see the offense at times sputter. But let's not forget, the Raptors have a lot of players who can go off and get buckets. Fred Van Vliet, the 50-plus point game he had a year ago. OG Anobi, I'm excited to see him take another step this season. How many times did OG light it up offensively? And you're looking at this guy like, wait, OG? Is this coming from you? We know you're great defensively, but now you're adding offense into the mix? A Gary Trent Jr., how many times did he take over? And have himself a big game. Yes, he's a streaky shooter and scorer. But a reminder, he didn't spend the entire year with the Raptors. He's going to have a full season now with the Raptors heading to this season. So expect him to be more comfortable and have more of a role with this team. That's a guy who can go get his buckets whenever he wants to. And then Pascal Siakam. The dude showed us that he can still play at a high level. And we're all hoping... That pre-bubble Siakam returns to the scene just in time for the Raptors' home crowd. Because Siakam, you know, he wants to have a big season. You know, he wants to shut a lot of people up. And let's just hope things go well 
with his rehabilitation after surgery and he is back into the lineup and he's back doing his thing and he's back playing like the all-star that he is. So in my opinion, ESPN having the Raptors outside of the playing group is a big mistake. I think they're wrong. The Raptors are definitely going to be in that playing group with an opportunity to move on up and get higher up in the standings. Time will tell. Bookmark this video. We'll see if ESPN got it right or wrong. I'm betting on them getting it wrong and we'll see what happens. But anyways, guys, what do you think? Do you agree with their ranking? Do you disagree with their ranking? And where do you see the Raptors finishing in the East this season? Before we get out of here, again, drop a like. It helps the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Plus, ring the bell. Follow me on social media. And thank you for your continued support on this channel. Like I said, expect to see more content as we get closer to the NBA preseason. That's it for me, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you all again in the next video. Until next time, be great and stay blessed. Peace out.